Today, lesson 43a, day number two of solving two-step equations. Uh, yesterday, we started the first half of this idea. Uh, we restricted, basically, all of the uh, constants and coefficients yesterday uh, to integers. Well, today, we take that out to rational numbers. In other words, positive and negative decimals, positive and negative fractions. Um, or mixed numbers, or a combination of those two things. So today, we're going to finish up this idea of solving two-step equations. And everything that we talked about yesterday applies today. Um, the thing that uh, I'm not, if you look in your notes, you'll notice that there's not a three-column table for you to fill in. When we shoulder partner, though, I still want you to talk about which properties you use. You just don't have to write them down. And we are going to continue with the idea of uh, checking your solution today. So this is what we've been working on lately. We started with solving one-step equations. We were consistently looking to do the inverse properties of what we saw, and we tend to say our answer or state our answer as the solution is because that really is uh, what you're finding. So we went through all four operations with one step. So problems like those. And uh, then yesterday we talked about two step like this one and we worked on showing our steps like we did with one step but we added this idea of justifying, in other words stating which math properties we used. If we added the same number to each time it's the uh, addition property of equality and uh, if you subtract it's the subtraction property of equality and so on. So when we say to justify that's what we need to do and then we introduced the idea of checking to make sure whether our solution really is what we claim it to be. And uh, at that point, there's really no excuse to miss any equation solving. And then we worked a little bit yesterday about rearranging uh, equations in, in an equivalent form. Most students are less likely to make a mistake if the equation is in this form right here. And so we did a little bit of practice where we were doing that. And I made the comment also, you don't have to rewrite them. That's just an idea for some of you that might make things a little bit easier. And these are all the things that I've already talked about. Inverse operations and all the properties, the four properties that we use when we solve equations. So here is uh, the first new problem for today. Much like yesterday, except now we will start to see positive and negative decimals and or fractions. So it should be obvious to you. Um, that we're going to have to subtract one and two thirds from both sides. Now, uh, yesterday, that very first problem I did, I brought up tiles, right? Showed you how to do this with tiles. Uh, why would tiles not be a very good uh, strategy for today? Because you're going to be using them with fractions. Yeah, how are you going to have one and two thirds tiles, right? That's uh, a little difficult to deal with. So. That's why we quickly abandoned that strategy and used some mathematics and solve these algebraically. And so we would need to subtract one and two thirds from both sides. Why? Because that is the inverse operation to adding one and two thirds to both sides. And we've created zero there like we want to. And now we have three x left on the left hand side and then negative nine and one sixth left on the right hand side. And of course, that negative seven and a half minus one and two thirds off to the side, you may have to do a little bit of work to figure that out. And then from there, we're of course, of course going to do the inverse property to multiplying by three, and that would be subtracting by three. Do we have an issue here somewhere? Yeah. Okay, hold on. What? Oh, your notes are incorrect? Just change it to what it is up here then. I know sometimes we have that issue. Just fix your notes to make it like it is up here, okay? All right, so getting back to this, we have 3x equals negative 9 and 1 6. The inverse operation to multiplying by 3 is to divide by 3. So at this point, we need to divide both sides by 3. And we created the 1 there that we were trying to make. So on the left-hand side, we're left with x. <coughs> And on the right-hand side, we need to figure out what negative 9 and 1 6 divided by 3 is. And remember, we've done problems, division problems with mixed numbers or fractions. When they do look like this, you just need to remember that that really means this. 
and of course you have to remember how to divide mixed numbers and so on. Uh, so if you have to do that math off to the side, it's okay to do that, but we do need to show our steps, and so we should end up with x equals negative 3 and 118. So that's what the solution is. Now when we, if we were to check that, we would substitute it in like we did yesterday and make sure that it is uh, correct. So once again, the rules for transforming equations, and we have some blank areas where we're supposed to fill some things in. The goal is to get the variable on one side of the equation by itself. We always perform the same operation to both sides of an equation. To undo an operation, we perform its inverse operation to both sides of the equation. Uh, adding and subtracting are inverses. Multiplication and division are inverses. We always show all of our steps, and it's easiest to undo addition or subtraction first, and I showed you why um, yesterday. So I'm going to stop for a second to let people get their blank areas filled in in their notes. Okay, let's have everybody try number one, and number one is negative uh, 3 eighths x plus 2 and 1 fourth equals 1 and 1 half. So once you get your solution to number one, please check to make sure it is what you claim it to be. So when I walked around, the two most common answers that I saw, and I saw this in almost every paper, was either x equals 2 or x equals negative 2. Let me get the phone here. Okay, so uh, once again, um, the most, two most common answers I saw were either x equals negative 2 or positive 2 for the solutions. Now, if you had checked like you were supposed to, you would realize why one of those is not right if you got the wrong solution. And I'm, right now, I'm not really sure which one's right, but we're going to find out here in a second. Uh, so I need to subtract 2 and 1 fourth from both sides. That is the inverse operation to adding 2 and 1 fourth. And I made my 0 right there like I wanted. And uh, 1 and 1 half minus 2 and 1 fourth is negative 3 fourths. So now we need to divide both sides by negative 3 eighths because that is the inverse operation to multiplying by negative 3 eighths, which is what negative 3 eighths x means, negative 3 eighths times x. And so now I need to figure out what negative 3 fourths divided by negative 3 eighths is. Well, I can clearly see those of you who got negative 2, that can't be right, right? Because we have a negative divided by a negative. So if you got a negative answer, that means somehow you dumped the negative somewhere um, and I don't know if it was maybe right here. When you transferred that over down here, you got positive. Or you, when you divide it right here, you didn't use a negative 3 eighths. But we need to make sure that we get that, we get that cleared up, okay? Uh, but the solution should be x equals 2. And we are supposed to check this one. So we substitute 2 in for x into the original problem like that. Uh, negative 3 eighths times 2 is negative 3 fourths. And negative 3 fourths plus 2 and 1 fourth is 1 and 1 half, so we can see that that has to be right. Okay? All right, let's go to number 2. Everybody try number 2, please. All right, so number 2, we of course need to add 23.3 to both sides because that is the inverse operation. And uh, we created the 0 there like we wanted to, so now we have negative 5c equals, and then we need to add those two numbers together. And so, once again, you know, a couple of you, you dumped your sign somewhere. And I don't know whether it's you lost track of the fact that, that this really is a negative 5c here, or when you divided both sides by 5, you may have done that. But negative 5c means negative 5 times c. And the inverse operation to multiplying by negative 5 is dividing by negative 5. So don't lose track of the negative symbols there, okay? And so we end up with a solution of c equals negative 6.5, and the purpose of checking is to check whether you have a solution that is correct or not, a solution that makes a true statement. And negative 6.5 does, so it must be right, okay? All right, I would like all of you to do number three and number four. Do both three and four, please. Number three, we need to add three halves to both sides. That is the inverse operation, and we made zero right there as the quick check. 
negative 1 half plus 3 halves is 1. So now we have 1 equals 5 halves d. To solve for d, we do the inverse operation uh, to multiplying 5 halves by d, and that would be dividing both sides by 5 halves. We've made our 1 right there, and 1 divided by 5 halves is 2 fifths. So the solution is d equals 2 fifths. Any questions about number 3? Okay, and of course if I check, you will see that that is correct. Substitute 2 fifths in for x, and we end up with this, which is a true statement. And then, number four, we needed to subtract 15 from both sides because that's the inverse operation to adding 15. And a quick check is we made our zero there. And so now we need to divide both sides by negative 3.2. A few of you got bogged down in the division there, but at this point we shouldn't be getting bogged down in dividing two decimal numbers. Um, but we should end up with x equals 6.8125 for the solution, and if we check, it will create a true statement. Any questions about number four? What's that? <clears throat> uh, that's a good question. What do you think it is? Six, 13 over what? That sounds right to me, yeah. Anybody else do it as a mixed number? Okay. All right, so now we do a couple of problems where we have a mixture of decimals and fractions. And the same strategies we've taken all along still apply. Your choice, convert 9.8 and 6.3 to mixed numbers or convert one-fifth to a decimal. It does not matter. Um, I am going to uh, turn it into all decimals. And the reason is because for me it was less work. I only had to convert one thing. So I'm turning... Uh, 9.8 equals 6.3 plus 1 fifth m into an equivalent equation, uh, which would be 9.8 equals 6.3 plus 0.2 m. And I don't think that should be a big mystery. Um, we've done these things before. We could convert to mixed numbers once again. It does not matter. So if we continue from here, uh, I would subtract 6.3 from both sides because that's the inverse operation. And now I have 3.5 equals 0.2m. And then we would divide both sides by 0.2 because that is the inverse operation to multiplying by 0.2. And 3.5 divided by 0.2 is 17.5. So if you convert it to mixed numbers, you would get a solution of m equals 17.5. If you convert it all to decimals, of course, you get a solution of m equals 17.5. And if I check, you can see it does make a true statement. All right, everybody try. Number six. So we need to do some converting here. I'm going to rewrite it in a, into an equivalent equation. And I'm going to go with uh, converting negative 1 and 1 tenth to decimals just because it's the easiest thing to do, in my opinion. And so from there, we add 3.24 to both sides. That is the inverse operation. And then divide both sides by 2 because that's the inverse operation and we should end up with a solution of h equals 1.07. And if we check, we can clearly see it does make a true statement. All right, uh, I don't think we need to uh, do this since we did that yesterday, and really what we are doing today is the same thing that we did yesterday, except with decimals and fractions. So our last idea for today goes back to an idea of when you first learned how to deal with fractions with common denominators. And what has happened over the last couple of years, when you first learned how to do that, is you learn how to cut steps. And so you forget the very basics of what is happening when you're adding or subtracting fractions with common denominators. Most people just jump straight to 9 sevenths. But what you, when you were first taught, you were first taught to write it like this first. And this is the step that most people skip. Well, this is very important in know, knowing that what's on the left is equivalent to what is on the right and the reverse of that. So if I give you 5 plus negative 11 over 9, that represents the same thing as 5 ninths plus negative 11 ninths. And there are spots in your notes where you're supposed to be filling these in. And so if I have 5 plus w over 9, what is that equivalent to? 
Five ninths plus one ninth w? Yeah, or five ninths plus w over nine. Okay? Now that's very important when we do equations like number seven. Because number seven utilizes this idea. So in number seven, we have six plus h all over five equals negative nine. So what we want to do is we want to uh, split up six plus h over five into an equivalent form of that, which would be six fifths plus h over five equals negative nine. Now once we do that, it's we've now turned it into a problem like we have now done many, many times. Okay, I'm going to let you finish number seven, and then we'll check it, and then we'll do number eight, and then we're finished for today. So all we're doing here is we're going back to the very basics of what multiple fractions added together, or subtracted for that matter, what they represent, what they look like, what they're equivalent to. All right, from here we need to subtract 6 fifths from both sides. That is the inverse operation. We're left with h over 5 equals negative 51 over 5. We need to multiply both sides by 5 because that is the inverse operation to dividing by 5. And we should end up with h equals negative 51 for the solution. And if I check, I can see that that is correct. All right, everybody do number 8, and then we are finished for today. But let me, uh, let me go through this very quickly. I'm going to split up w minus 6 over 2 into w over 2 minus 6 over 2 because that's really what it is equivalent to. And a six, negative 6 over 2 is negative 3, which is why that right-hand side turns into w over 2 minus 3. And I need to add 3 to both sides. And then, of course, multiply both sides by 2. Don't lose track of the negative symbol. And we end up with a solution of negative 3 for w. And if we check, we can see that it is correct. All right, we are finished for today.